Well, hello there. Jackie Holland here. I'm with Whosoever Will Outreach Ministries, a ministry outreach to hurting people from the jailhouse to the penthouse. So that may or that may include you. And I know it does a lot of people because they are hurting and they're struggling. And I just want you to know today that God cares about us. He cares. Oh, he cares about whatever it is that you're going through. And so you may think that you're all alone and that you've, you're forgotten and you're not feeling very peaceful and you're not feeling very safe. But let me just share with you. The Lord said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. He said, I will be with you to the very end of the age. I am your first, the last, the beginning, the end. I'm the alpha. I'm the omega. I'm, I'm all in all. So the Lord wants us to know that we can trust in him. You know, I'm going to just read a little bit today, and I'm going to read out of uh, a, a parable, actually, a short story that Jesus read uh, in Luke 18. And it says, two men were in the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee. He was like, you know, a religious person. And the other was a tax collector, which really tax collectors were despised. Uh, they may still be despised for all I know. I know that it's painful to have to pay taxes, isn't it? But we all have to, and it's part of it. And poor old tax collector, it's just a job, I suppose. But but tax collectors in Jesus' days, they were they were despised and, and not honored, but they were very real, just like they are today. The Pharisee stood up in the in the synagogue in the temple, and he said, "This, God, God." I thank you that I'm not like other swindlers, <laughs> unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector here. He said, I fast twice a week. I pay tithes on all that I get. But this tax collector, this tax gatherer, he's standing some distance away from me. Look at him. You know, that tax collector wasn't even willing to lift up his eyes to heaven. He was so he was so cast down. And he beat on his chest. And he said, God, God was dealing with him. He said, God, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. That's what God is looking for us. He wants to show mercy. He wants to show grace. He wants to bless you. He wants to anoint you. He wants to separate you from a lot of things that you're struggling with. But you've got to call on him. And there was here was a Pharisee, a religious, religious. A lot of people say, I'm very religious. Well, that's not necessarily uh, good. <laughs> Because religion is your man's attempt to get to God. And, uh, you know, a relationship is different. God, God wants to have a relationship with you. He doesn't want you just trying to get his attention. And like this Pharisee was pointing out, Oh, I thank God I'm not like that so-and-so. And we're not ever supposed to be doing that. You know that, don't you? We're not supposed to be comparing ourselves by others and say, Well, at least I don't rob banks at least i'm not like cheating at least i'm not a glutton <laughs> so we can always find reasons why we can point the finger at other people and say i'm glad i'm not like them but really that doesn't impress the lord this is jesus talking he said but the tax collector he was standing there and he, he was saying god be merciful Jesus said, I tell you this, this man went down to this house justified. He left justified in right standing rather than the other one. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. Hmm. But he who humbles, humbles himself will be exalted. That's interesting, isn't it? It says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up. 
Have you ever thought about people working so hard to try to get in position? They're just kissing rear ends. They're just kissing up to people. They're buying them stuff. They're giving them gifts. They're doing all kinds of things to try to get in the good graces. And then only to maybe someday later find that they somebody else just totally bypassed them. Or they get mistreated or whatever. And none of that did a bit of good. All they did was humiliate their self. Don't do that. It says it is, you naturally you honor people and you treat them nicely. And you do more than expected if possible. That's all, There's nothing wrong with that. And if somebody calls that kissing up, then so that's their issue. But to try to win over or top somebody else in with the sales and everything else, just like, you know what, just give it 100%. How about 110 and then when it crashes and everything falls around you, you can say, hey, I did my best. And I believe you'll be rewarded. And I believe that God is taking notice because he, see, it talked about those two men. One, who, I mean, he gave his money. He gave his money to the church. He gave, he tithed. He kept the rules. He, he said, I did it all. I didn't, I didn't run around. I didn't have, I didn't uh, commit adultery. I was, I was, uh, I was not a, a, a thief, a swindler, like, a, like, like a lot of people. I did all the right things. I'm so glad I'm not like all the sorry outfits. And the Lord says, you know what? The one who is getting my attention is the one that says, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm not worthy to un like. Like John the Baptist said about Jesus, he said, the one that's coming after me, because John was baptizing people before Jesus actually just kind of came on the scene and was baptized in the Jordan River. And he, John the Baptist was preaching, repent, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, repent, repent, repent. There's one coming after me whose shoes, shoelaces I'm not even worthy to untie. I'm not even worthy. So you think, well, that's kind of like a false humility. If you think you're not worthy, you're worthy because God says you're worthy. But you're not worthy because you did this thing or that thing and you topped somebody else. Because not is not, God is not keeping score. He's like, okay, two for, two for you, one for you. Uh, whoop, two, whoop, whoop. You just messed up. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, you did good. Oh, you did better. Oh, you gave a lot of money. Oops, you lied. You cheated. You lusted. Ups, ups, ups. All your righteousness like filthy rags. But the Lord has said, humble yourself into the mighty hand of God. I know you feel like a nobody. I know you feel like a zero, like nothing. But the Lord said, I see your heart. And I know, I heard you when you humbled yourself and you said, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse my heart of all unrighteousness. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus is my Savior, my only hope in heaven. I believe I've sinned and I need a Savior. And I believe you're the Savior. Please forgive me and accept me. And, and he will <laughs> he's not going to turn you away it says those that come to the Lord will not be cast out or turned away so the one that was accepted in this story is the one with the humble and broken and contrite heart Jesus is something else he just I love, I love his stories it says this is good it said um there was a certain ruler who said, Good teacher, what what should I do to inherit eternal life? Because a lot of people want to know, well, okay, if there is life after death, if there is life after death, then how am I going to get there from here? I mean, I mean, the good place, the good place, not the bad place, the good place, heaven. If there's a heaven, I, I want to go to heaven, not hell. Jesus said, Why do you call me good? There's none good except God alone. 
and Jesus said, you know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother. And the man said, all these things I've done from my youth. And when Jesus heard this, he said to him, one thing you still lack. Now go and sell all that you possess and distribute it to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and then come and follow me. Well, what an offer, but what a test. Go, you've done all those wonderful things, wonderful, wonderful deeds, but there's one thing that you're holding close to your heart. Maybe it's a person, maybe it's a thing, something that you've, it's just too hard. You can't let go of it. You say, maybe it's a person, maybe you're having an affair. You say, I can't let go. You're going to have to let go. Let go and let God. you got to trust Him. Let go and let God. God is not wanting you to suffer and to get and to hurt. He wants you, even though you may hurt in the middle of change, He wants you to move forward and He wants to lift you up and to increase you, not decrease you. We, we need to decrease in our own mind, <laughs> our own opinions of ourselves. But we need to increase in faith in God. But when, when the young man heard these things, he became very sad because he was really rich, real rich. And Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for those who are wealthy to enter into the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go into the kingdom of God. And the men around him said, well, Then who, how, how can he be saved? And, and Jesus said, The things impossible with men are possible with God. Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left houses or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom who shall not receive many times as much in this time and in the age to come eternal life. Hmm. Well, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? That was in Luke 18. The stories are there for a reason. They're there to encourage, edify, comfort, and exhort us to godliness and good works. They're there to quicken our hearts to say, you know what? I've, I, I know I can't make it without the Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. Admit it. Say, I need, the, I need God. Without God, I'm going to fall. Without God, I can't make right choices. I, I, I make bad choices. I need God's help. Ask Him. Every day I ask God, please, Lord, I need wisdom. I need a spirit of wisdom and not and a revelation in the knowledge of you. And I need to know the hope of my calling. And I need to know what I'm supposed to do and the direction I'm supposed to go. What do you want me to do, Lord? And then I don't just ask for myself. I ask then for my children and my family and my partners, ministry partners and my friends. And I say, God, help us. We need your help. You said in all of your ways, if you will acknowledge God, He will direct your paths. So today, I'm doing this message to encourage you not to quit, not to lose heart, not to, not to give up. But to know this, He that begun a good work in you is going to complete it. If you get a chance, go to my website, um, Jackie. HollandMinistries.com or WhosoeverWill.tv I would like for you to do something for me. There's something that's kind of bothered me. When I go to the mailbox, my actual physical mailbox, I get no mail hardly ever. And they had a big mix-up in the, in, the, in the mail department. The whole post office, I think, in Sherman. And because there was a new guy in there and he told me that and said a lot of the mail had been returned. Not just, not just my mail, lots of people. And, every, and anyway, there was a lot of confusion. They're getting it all worked out. But if you get a chance, just send me a piece of paper and say hi or a funny face or something on it. I know it might cost you 50 cents, but if you need it, I can send it back to you. I need something that shows that I'm getting some mail. I need to know that. It's post office box. Five seven, post office box fifty seven, Sherman, Texas seven five zero nine one. Go to Jackie Holland, post office box fifty seven, Sherman, Texas seven five zero nine one. 
Isn't that something? I, I, I just need to see if, see if that mail is coming. God is, God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? So remember, it's not by works of righteousness that we've done, but it's by grace. It's by His mercy and His grace. Oh, He loves you and He loves me. God bless my friends. In the name of Jesus, I pray. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, we will do that now. You can pray with me. Pray after me. I'm going to pray slowly. You can pray after me. Dear Heavenly Father, you can say that. Dear Heavenly Father, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart. I give you my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and your power. Help me say yes when I need to say yes. Help me say no when I need to say no. Teach me from this day forward and I will not be ashamed to be called a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm yours, Lord, and I thank you. And I thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jackie Holland here.